International Desk, where we bring you the world up to the minute. I'm Jonathan Mann. Happening right now at the iDesk, NATO leaders agree on an exit strategy for Afghanistan. But that doesn't mean troops will be coming home anytime soon. Warming ties for Cold War enemies. Russia and NATO forging a new partnership after decades of suspicion. Plus, are United Nations peacekeepers to blame for the cholera outbreak in Haiti? The people there think so. They've been rioting all week. We'll talk to the top UN official in Haiti about that and the growing outbreak. All the details right here, right now, at the iDex. Live from CNN Center, you're at the International Desk with Jonathan Mann. Thanks for joining us. Imagining the future of Afghanistan, that was NATO's goal today at a summit in Portugal. Afghan President Hamid Karzai signed an agreement with the alliance to give NATO a long-term role in his country, even after Afghan forces are to take over security in 2014. Thanks so much for talking with us. Well, if you want to lend a hand in Haiti, head to our website. We've compiled a list of eight organizations helping there. The address is cnn.com slash impact. From enemies to allies, almost, we'll have a look at the historic NATO-Russia summit. That and more here at the International Desk. Piercing the Iranian sky, Iran tests a new surface-to-air missile system. It says it's capable of knocking out modern aircraft and missiles. Iran developed the new Mirsad system after Russia canceled an agreement to sell Iran its most advanced SAM system, the S-300. The on-again, off-again missile deal, a metaphor for Russia's relationship with the West. Coming up here at the iDesk, a national calamity in Colombia, where more than a million people are suffering from devastating floods. We'll bring you a glimpse. A state of emergency in Colombia in the wake of mudslides and devastating floods. At least 136 people have been killed in the disaster. Altogether, more than a million people have been affected. The forecast even calls for more rain in large parts of the country over the next two weeks. Well, from a location that's seen plenty of rain to one that's been hard-pressed for any, Beijing is suffering through one of its worst weeks as far as air quality is concerned. Meteorologist Pedram Javahari joins us now from the International Weather Center. And when the air is bad in Beijing, it is very bad, I guess it's fair to say. So some better news in the forecast, Jonathan. Well, in the meantime, grime people are breathing in. Pedram Javahari, thanks very much. That does it for us here at the International Desk. I'm Jonathan Mann. Don't go away. The headlines are next, right here on CNN.